Psalms chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1. We're starting a new series today called Doing Life. Because the people you choose to do life with affects your life, where you are today, and it directs your future. The people who you do life with, the people who you choose to do life with, affects your present day and directs your future. It's a fact. You know, they'd say, there's an old saying that says, tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. Or it walks like a duck, you know, talks like a duck, and then it's a duck. Our parents, that's why when we're young, our parents, your mom always wanted to meet your friends, wanted to know who you were hanging out with, or your friends were very important. Even at school, whenever I got in trouble, they would come and say, well, mom's hanging out with certain type of friends, they his friends, and why? Because friends or relationships are influences in our life. And this is very important to your life with God because your the people you do life with will either pull you away from God or pull you closer to God. It's plain and simple. How many, how many have noticed that in your own life? You get around godly people, it brings you closer to God. You get around a spiritual person who prays and worship and makes you want to pray and worship more. You get around a person who's passionate about evangelism, it pulls you into evangelism. You get around a person who's passionate about uh, other areas like worship, it pulls you into worship. It just Those relationships are influences. So your relationships are more important than what you think they are. As a pastor, one of the greatest, uh, what I've seen in, in over 20 years, the last 25 years that I've been in ministry, that one of the toughest things to do is to uh, to counsel or help people pull away from negative influences in their life because relationships are, are relationships that are grown are tough to break sometimes. But your future is more important than your than your future is more important. Your your direction in life, your eternal direction is more important in life more important than any other thing that you can connect to here on this earth. And so sometimes some connections have to be broken and other connections have to be established in order to be encouraged to push in that certain direction. Psalms chapter 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law... He meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf does not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. How many would like to be that blessed? Man, that's powerful. That's powerful. He, bring, he brings fruit, he brings forth fruit in its season. The leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. I like the Lord made me that blessed man. Amen. So let I want to, I'm not going to read the rest of that. You can read that yourself, but we're going to hold, you know, let me go ahead and read it. It says, the ungodly are not so, but they are like a chaff which in the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand uh, in the judgment or sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the ways of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. You know, I'm 43 years old, and I just turned 43, uh, and I found out that life is all about relationships. Life is all about relationships. The older, the older you get, you realize that. It's not about money. It's not about success. It's not about career. It's about relationships. And some of you who are money minded are thinking, no, life is about money. Well, let me ask you a question. You think life's about money. Why do you make money? Why do you strive to make more money? Let me, let me tell you. You strive to make more money to have better, to, to enjoy the relationships that you have in your life. Hello? Doesn't that make sense? Money helps you enjoy relationships. Money helps you enjoy relationships. Why do you make money? To provide for the relationship you have with your kids. To provide food for them because you love them. To provide a home for the people you have a relationship with in your home, right? So life is about relationships. That's all what life is about. Who you do life with. That's what life is. The question is, who you do life with is very important. Because we don't, we sometimes we take our relationships too, too, too uh, loosely. So relationship was so important 
The Bible says that God sent his only son to suffer and die on the cross so that by his blood and his sacrifice, God's relationship with mankind will be restored. The work of the cross was all about restoring right relationships. Are y'all with me this morning? He died so that you can have life and have it more abundant, abundantly. It was about relationship. It was about who you're doing life with. Jesus died on the cross so that he could do life with you. Relationship is so important that Jesus himself, when he came to the earth, he was very selective in who he would do life with. Jesus didn't just hang with anybody. Hello? He didn't just show up and say, hey, who wants to be my friend? Come on. No, no, no. He showed up and said, no, not you. No, not you. Yeah, you and you. The Bible says he, tro he chose 12 men to do life with. 12. Jesus affected millions for the rest of the history of the world. And he did it just with 12. Now, let me, re let me, let me, let me sh get, bring that 12 into perspective. He chose 12 men, and out of the 12, one of them betrayed him. That means your relationships aren't going to be perfect. Even Jesus chose a relationship that betrayed him eventually. That goes to show us that not everybody who is who they seem to be in your life. Who are you doing life with? Hello? It's going to get sweaty here this morning. You're going to get nervous. Gonna start sweating under your neck. See, unless you live in a cave somewhere and completely isolate yourself from people, every facet of your life touches a relationship in some way or another. Think about it. Everything we do, everywhere we go, we are in a relationship with other people. You have relationships at home with your spouse, with your children, with your parents, with your siblings. You have relationships at work with your boss and your co-workers. And, and you have relationships with vendors and people you do business with. Those are relationships. They're relationships at different levels because every relationship is at a different level in your life. Not every level of, not every relationship in your life, life has a high level of importance or high intimacy. Are you with me? Some people you're intimate with, some people you're less intimate with, some people you just wave at them as they drive down. Hey, how you doing, girl? What's up? You just keep on going. That's that level. Are you with me? You have relationships with people at church. You have relationships with people at the gym, at the store that you see every day, the same cash register, uh, the, the lady that works in the cash register. You see her all the time because you're always at the store. Hey, girl, how you doing? How the kids? She knows how many kids you got because she's seen them. But that's that level of relationship. So everywhere you go, you have relationships. Why? Because everything in creation was created to relate to something within its own environment. Can I teach a little bit this morning? God designed things to God designed things on this earth, people, everything. He designed things to serve and to benefit from their relationship with other components within its own environment. What do you mean, Pastor? I mean this. The plants need the sun. When God created the plants, he had to create the sun. People, when God created the sun, he created the plants. Why? Because they feed off of each other. So the fish need water. The bird need air. The tree needs the soil. God designed things to benefit from their relationship with other components within its environment. As long as the plant stays within the environment, as long as the plant stays in the environment of the soil, the plant can grow. The moment a plant is plucked out of its environment, out of the soil, the plant dies. Because it needs relationship with that soil. It needs relationship with the sun. It needs relationship with the rain so it can grow. Hello? It, it needs to do life with those things in order for it to grow. Human beings were created a little different. Human beings were created to be social creatures. They, 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 they thrive within the context of relationship with other humans. Look at the book of, of Genesis. The Bible says that Adam, the first man that was created, was in the company of all these species, all these animals, all these plants, all these trees. You know, the garden, a lot of the garden of Eden, wasn't like what it is today. Today we have to put a tiger and a lion in a cage because if we let that thing out, they'll eat us, right? We have to separate the animals because they're prey. The Garden of Eden wasn't like that. 
The guard, Adam walked along with the lions. He laid down and he could lay down the lion on his, on his side and just to keep warm, he could cuddle up to a lion. Why? Because there, there was not that. It was peace, it was harmony. Matter of fact, when God created Adam, he created him and gave, and, and gave him a job. He said, name all the animals. So Adam was a busy person. Adam had, had companionship with all the animals that he was naming. He was surrounded by all these animals. But listen, but God still looked at Adam and said, he's alone. How was Adam alone when he was surrounded with, he had a job, he had, he had uh, animals, all these other things around him. He wasn't alone. But God said, he's alone. In Genesis 2.18, he said, it's not good for man to be alone. Why? Because Adam didn't have anything at his level to relate to. Relationship to humanity is what oxygen is to the lungs and what blood is to the entire, into the bo entire body. We were created for relationships. Now, God has placed within each, and every, each of us the need to be with other people, to do life with other people. The fact is that we are affected by relationships every day. And people are affected every day, either positively or negatively, by the relationship they have with us. Think about that. You can affect somebody simply by the attitude you carry. The, the spirit you carry. You affect people. Why? Because you come in relationship with them. Are you with me? And the quality of relationship affects each other in every aspect of our life. When there's a problem at home and we're having difficulty with one of our coworkers and we can't get along with our neighbor, we're at odds with somebody from church or, or even of our own family. Whenever we have relationship problems, our lives struggle. Is that true? Are you with me? Have you ever had a problem with somebody? And you take that, do, do you just have a problem with somebody? Do you have a problem with somebody at work? And you, it, when you clock out of work, you don't need that problem at work. You take it home with you. You go home and tell your wife about it. You go home and you talk about it. You're mad about it. You sleep at night. You wake up in the morning and start thinking, oh man, I gotta see that jerk in the morning again. It affects your whole life. Are y'all with me? Is that true? Why well, it affects you. So relationships affect us everywhere we go. When our relationships are struggling, we are struggling. Am I hitting a, I'm just hitting a soft spot. Y'all are just like, y'all waiting for the answer. Why? When our relationship was struggling, our lives are struggling. Why? Because the ultimate purpose behind the creation of man is love. Love God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul, and love other people as yourself. Most of the time, when you're struggling to love other people, you're actually struggling to love yourself. It's a love problem that you have with yourself. Are y'all with me? The scripture tells us what? God is love. I especially like that statement because it did not say that God gives love. It doesn't just say that God shows love. It says that He is love. Now this is important because God has a lot of other qualities and, and a lot of other qualities. He's righteous, he's omnipotent, he's almighty, he's holy. He has all these wonderful things. He's, he's so much more than just love. Yet God could be all of these other attributes and still exist by himself in isolation. God can have all these things and exist in isolation. He doesn't need anyone else to be holy. He doesn't need anyone to be righteous. He doesn't need anyone to be almighty. He can be omnipotent, omnipresent, almighty. He can be merciful. He can be graceful. He can be all the rest of the qualities all by himself. Why? Because God is God. However, it is the nature of love to give itself to someone else. So love cannot be love in isolation. Hello? If, if you're in love, in isolation, the only person you love is yourself. And that's called a selfish person. Are y'all with me? Love cannot be love in isolation. Love becomes love when it's given to other people. And so, in order for love to be fulfilled, it has to have 
someone. I'm building a foundation here. Let me build this. In order for love to be fulfilled, it has to have someone to give love to. It has to be able to give to love to someone else. That's why the basis of relationship is love. The basis of doing life with people is love. For God so loved the world that he gave. Y'all know the scripture. 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not, love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Now think about, think about this love in terms of relationship, in terms of doing life with other people. When you do life with people, you're doing life. Everybody, you know right now we're doing life with each other. We're here in church, right? We're doing life with each other. You may, listen, some of you may have never been to my house or never, I've never been to your house. We never sat in a restaurant together. But here, when we get here in this sanctuary, we're doing life with each other. This is doing life. I love, that's why I love when I say, turn around and hug the person next to you. I like that part. Why? Because we're, that's what church is about. It's about doing life. Somebody say doing life. And who you do life with is a choice. Now watch. Think of love, this definition of love, in terms of how you do life. Now watch. Love is patient and kind. Are you patient and kind? Yeah. Yeah? No? <laughs> patient, sometimes. Kind? Uh, well, okay. <laughs> Love is not jealous. Oh, miss that one. <sighs> or boastful. Or proud. Or rude. Hello? It does not demand its own way. Woo. Well, I want it this way. Doing life with other people. How many, how many have ever done life with somebody that wants it their own way? You're, some of you are married to that. Oh, I ain't going to say nothing. No. That's, that's part four when it's called doing life with your wife. That's part four. Or doing life with your spouse. Watch this. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. It keeps no record of wrong. Lord, help us. It does not rejoice well, about injustice, but rejoices whether, whenever the truth wins. Love never gives up, never loses faith. It's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Listen to how the Amplified Bible says it. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. It is ever ready to believe the best in every person. Its hope is faithless under all circumstances, and it endures everything without weakening. Wow. Y'all with me here. Every good and lasting relationship, it, it, it requires love. It's based on love. In fact, if love isn't the number one factor in that relationship, it will fall apart. You, when you do life with people, if you're not doing life with, if you don't love the people you're doing life with, that relationship will fall apart because the moment something small hits it, it falls apart. I've had friends, I have relations, people I do life with, when we've had big clashes, we're, but we're still friends at the end. Are y'all with me? Why? Because we, the, our relationship is based on love, not convenience. Our relationship is based on love, not just when we feel good about each other. Hello? Our relationship is based on love. And not just when they're doing what I want them to do and how I want them to do it. And when they're not making me mad, our relationship is based on love. And so when you love each other, when you choose to do life with somebody and a, and a storm comes up, your relationship lasts through the storm. Why? Because it's based on love. I'm mad at you, but I love you. I don't agree with you, but I love you. Hello? I don't like the way you talk to me, but I love you. I don't like that shirt you're wearing, but I love you. That's why, who you do life, that's why you have to be careful who you do life with. That's why you have to be careful who you allow to do life with you. Because you don't want people around you that's gonna, that's going to, that is going to talk about you or leave you or turn their back on you the first time life gets stuck. First time you do something they don't like. What's well, getting hot in this church? I'm trying to help your life out. Watch. Our relationship with God is a good indication of our relationship with other people. God isn't an on again and off again God. When you come into God, you come into covenant with Him. 
It's like a marriage covenant. Are y'all with me? He, the Bible says that God's love for mankind is everlasting. Now, with that being said, let me say this. We base all this on love. Doing life and relationships is about loving other people. And I, now, and I understand that. You've got to love people. But just because God says love everyone doesn't mean you have to get close to everyone. Just God, because God says to love them doesn't mean they have to be in your app in your living room this afternoon. Just God, because God says to love them doesn't mean you have to be sitting at a restaurant or having lunch with them. There are some people you love up close. There are some people you love at a distance. Hello? That's why the Bible says love your enemies. You can love an enemy and don't have to have a relationship with them. Because you know they're your enemy. They're not for you. Hello? That goes along with family, too. Oh, huh, huh, huh. Where's my organ playing? There's family. Come on, let's be real. There's family who, they, they're your family, but they don't want you to succeed. They're your family, but they want you to fail. They're your family, but they want you to come to them because they want you to need them. They're your family, but they don't believe in you. They're your family, but they talk about you. They're your family, but they they still destroy your name every time it comes up. They're your family. You you love you can love them because you're family, but you don't have to sit at the table with them. I refuse to sit at the table with people who have a pen in their hand just waiting for me to do something. That doesn't look pastoral. Oh, you oh, I'm gonna write that down because I'm gonna use that later. I'm gonna write that look. You're my friend. Oh, you did that. They keep that the love keeps no record of wrong. If someone around you is keeping a record of your wrongs, they don't really love you, honey. Woo, I thought put the Holy Ghost on that one. If someone is keeping a record of everything. You do wrong. You said this, and you did this, and you know, what about this? And they're keeping a record, and the moment you sit in front of them, they pull out that record. Look, here, look I wrote it down right here. On June 23rd, you said this. And on May 2nd, you said this. And you said, and you said, and you said. Whoa. Oh, you don't love me. You don't love me. You don't love me. You just like being around me, but you don't love me. Hello? Am I helping anybody here? God said, love them. But it doesn't mean you have to do life with them. I'm trying to help you. Because why? Because when you do life with these people, they become such a distraction that you can't focus on what God has called you to do. They pull away from your intimacy with God. You go to prayer, you go to prayer mad. Because you're putting them with them. Are you hearing me? You've got to learn to do life and surround yourself with people who are going the same direction as you. Who you do life with directs your life. Who do you do life with affects your life. Yes, God said to love people, but he also gave a stern warning as to who you should not do life with or who you should do life with. You are not called to do life with everyone. Blessed is the man who walks in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. God said, in other words, God said, don't do life with ungodly people. <laughs> but I've known them for 20 years. Don't do life with ungodly people. If you're trying to live godly, don't do life with ungodly people. Evangelizing to them and doing life with them is two different things. You can witness to somebody about Christ. And not do life with him. He said, Blessed the man who what? Does not counsel, who not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Don't do life with ungodly people. Now notice it says, who is who walks not in the counsel of ungodly people. Let me stop and say this. Stop getting counsel from ungodly people. When you're going through something in your life, don't go to anybody at your job just because you sit and have lunch when you see them every day and start telling them your problems and hear and accept their counsel. That's an ungodly person giving you ungodly counsel. Go to godly people to hear godly counsel. Hello? Don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor stand in the path 
of sinners. No, don't do life with ungodly people. Don't do life with sinners. What's a sinner? Oh, the pastor, the Bible says we're all sinners. We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. No, no, no. I ain't talking about if you sin. We all sin, but we're not all sinners. A sinner is somebody who's separated from God because of their sin, and they don't even regard God in your life. You could be, you can, you could sin and struggle. You could be struggling with sin and still be okay with God. Hello? You could be struggling with sin. Of be struggling, you're fighting it. The sign that you're fighting it tells me that there's a God in your life. The, fight, the fact that you're fighting it tells me there's the Holy Spirit convicting you. Are you with me? Don't do life with sinners. Don't, it says, uh, nor sat in the path of sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful. Don't do life with scornful people. Don't do life with scornful people. If you do life with these people, it will hinder your blessings. It will hinder your blessing. When you do life with ungodly people, your life will eventually become ungodly. When you do life with scornful people, you will eventually become scornful. You can always tell a scornful person because all they do is gossip about other people. Are y'all with me? Proverbs 14. I told you this was a good, this is a needed. This is needed. This is needed. You know, can I tell y'all this morning? Why? Because mo look, look, most of your problems, most of our problems have to deal with people, with people we do like. Anybody say amen to that? And most of the stuff, you know why I deal with stuff like this too? Because I grew up in church. And there ain't no, there ain't no fight like a church fight. Hello? I have, we have a lot of people in the years that we've been having this church. You don't know how many people that I know that come to church here because they've had problems in other churches. And they come, and they come into the building and shit with me because they say, man, you're not religious. So they come build a relationship with me. They come here quite a bit. I've had pastors who've lost their churches and come sit in our in, in the congregation to be restored. I've had them all the time. I can name five of them right now that have sat here in my in this sanctuary to hear my preaching. They sit under this covering. Why? As God restores them. Are you with me? We've had people come to this church and say, "What are you doing here?" Oh, they got hurt at another church and they're here. Why? Because they can't, because they were doing life with people that hurt them. Can I tell you, whenever you do life with people, people are going to hurt you. It's a normal fact. It's a normal. Even the most people that you love the most will hurt you. If the people, that's why you got to stay prayed up, and that's why that love has got to be real. Watch Proverbs fourteen. It says this: Stay away from fools, for you don't, for you won't find knowledge on their lips. Woo! Write that scripture down. Proverbs 14. That's why you don't do life with ungodly people. Got counsel from the ungodly. Proverbs 14, 7. It says, stay away from fools, for you won't find knowledge on their lips. Verse 8. The prudent understand where they're going, but fools deceive themselves. 9. Fools make fun of guilt, but the, but the godly acknowledges it and seeks reconciliation. My God. Are y'all with me? I heard another preacher teach a, a few years ago about three basic types of people you need or you want to interact with and that you need in your life if you're a person of destiny. But if you're going to follow God's purpose for your life, you will have three groups of people in your life. I want to give you those three groups here this morning. Number one. Are y'all with me, church? Y'all receiving this? Watch. Number one. The first group of people are confidants. You have very few of them. You will have very few of them. Confidants are people in your life that love you unconditionally. They are into you. They are, whether you're up or down, right or wrong, they're with you. They're your confidant. You can be confident with them. And everything in your life. They are in it for the long haul. If you get in trouble, they get in trouble with you. If they'll, they'll see you, if, if they see you in the jailhouse, they'll go bail you out. And they'll come to you if you're in a, in, in a crack house. They'll come to you if you're in a hospital. I know I'm getting descriptive, but these are confident. People will walk with you in the lowest moments of your life and in the high moments of life. Listen, if you if you if, if you ever if you're ever gonna inherit your blessings, you will never inherit them until you find a confidant. Why? 
You can't be a David unless you find your Jonathan. I know the story of Jonathan and David. I'm not going to give you that today, but you can't be David unless you're Jonathan. Confidants are the, those who feed you. Confidants are the people who feed you. Watch this. They're the ones who feed you. They are your encouragers. They're the ones who look at you and say, go. Come on, you can do it. They'll look at you and hurt the leaves, hurt the leaves, hurt the leaves. They, they want you to be better. Confidants want you to succeed. They want you to look better. They want you to do better. They want you to, to be better. Enough. They want you to look when you buy a, a new shirt. They say, Woo, let me buy a new shirt. You got one. Come on. They're not going, no. No. They're your confidant. They love you. When you come around and say, man, I got black, I got a raisin at work, they say, Woo, come on. What are we going to celebrate? Let's go. Come on. But he is on, on you. Now, <laughs> my. You can pay for it, you got it ready. Let's go. And y'all like, hey, hey, why are you coming You trust them with your most intimate places in your life. Confidants, if they see your sin, they don't go try to expose it. They hold it and help you heal it. Hello? They're a confidant. They see a, a sin in you or a weakness, and they don't go around and start telling me, you know what I saw her do? In front of you, say, girl, I'm with you. They go and toss it down your mind. No, 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 no. They see a sin, they're going to. I tell my man, I remember when we were having men up, I told my man, I said, you are, there's a difference between covering for a brother and covering up, covering up for a brother. I told my man, I always cover you. You're in sin, I'll cover you. I'll cover you. You mess up, I'll cover you. That's different from covering up. I'm not going to cover up your sin. But I'm going to cover your sin with love and mercy and grace and forgiveness. I'm going to cover you. I'm going to, I'm going to cover you so you won't fall. I'm going to cover you so the, so the, so the, the embarrassment of your sin won't, 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 won't kill your life. I'm going to cover you. I'm not going to cover up for you, but I'm going to cover you. I got your back. Are y'all with me? Hello? Confidants. We all need confidants. They protect you when they hear other people talk about you. A confidant. When, 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 they're, when they hear someone saying something that's not, that sh even when they hear somebody, somebody saying something that's true about you, they protect you because you have confidence, they have confidence in you that you'll get up from whatever you're dealing with. They protect you even when it's true. That's your confidant. Are y'all with me? It's not that you're not perfect. They need to hear somebody say something that's true, but they still protect you because they have confidence in you and come back with you whatever you're going through. They believe in you. They're your confidants. They, they feed you encouragement because they believe in your kingdom assignment. Let me say amen. You have, to, you, 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 you have to have someone who can feed you so that you can feed somebody else. Confidence, the confidants are the few people in your life that are for you. Hello? If you have two or three in your lifetime, you're a blessed person. Not everyone in your life is a confidant. Hello? I can count mine on these three fingers. Hello, are you with me? I'm surrounded by a lot of people, but I, there's three of them that are my confidant. Are y'all with me? Hello? I'm talking about outside of your spouse. Well, my wife is not confident. My husband is not confident. No, not when you're fighting. Not when they're handing, they're handing you them divorce papers. You need a confidant outside of that. Hello? Are y'all with me? Don't get religious on me now. Don't get religious. Well, the Lord, I have a covenant with my husband and wife. Praise the Lord. That's why you've been divorced twice. Oh, y'all don't want to hear it. Y'all don't want to hear it. You got to have confidants. God has sent godly people into your life. So they, they can help build you. Are y'all with me? The next type of per person is, next type of people are constituents. A constituent. First you have confidants, constituents. These are people that are not for you. They're just for what you're for. They're not for you. They're for what you're for. So they're, they're with you because y'all going along the same purpose. Hello? 
They are for what you're for. They're your constituents. As long as you're, you are for what they're for, then they'll walk with you, they'll work with you, they'll labor with you. But never think that they're for you. They're only for what you're for. You have to know that because if you meet, if, if, if they meet someone else, if a constituent meets someone else that furthers their own agenda, they'll leave you and hook up with them. Because it furthers their agenda. Constituents. Constituent. I'm for what you're for. I'm not for you. I still keep my list and I still talk about you. I still all these things about you behind your back. I'm just for what you're for. Say, go. You, you, let's go. We're doing this together. But the moment somebody else comes along that furthers my agenda, peace, I'm out. And the whole time, you treated them as a friend and a conf confidant. And the moment, th the moment somebody else came along that benefited them more than you, they walked away from you. Are you with me? They're just, they were just there for what you were for. They're constituents. Throughout life, particularly if you are broken, you will make your constituents, you will make the mistakes by making your constituents your confidants. The biggest mistake you can make is to make a constituent a confidant. When you start confiding things in your life to constituents, because you're treating constituents like confidants, and they should have never been at that level of your life. They should have never been that intimate with you. Hello? How many of you learned that lesson? Watch. Number three, I want to move on because I'm, 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 let me go a little bit deeper. I'm, let me give, me, give me 10 more minutes. The third type is our comrades. These are people who are not for you. These are people who are not for what you're for. They're just against who you're against. Comrades. It's like an army. Hello? When you're in the army, you're in the military. Not everybody in the military who's fighting along, uh, aside you is your friend or your buddy. Sometimes y'all can be enemies, but y'all have the same enemy, so y'all are fighting together against the same enemy. This represents a lot of Christians. There's a lot of comrades in Christianity, in church. Are y'all with me? Y'all look mad at me this morning. I'm helping you. There's a lot of comrades. We all fight the devil. Come on, let's go. Let's fight the devil. Let's pray. Let's do all the world. We're all going in the same direction. We're fighting the devil. They're comrades. They're there because they're fighting for the same cause. This will cause people to come together who are not for you. Not, but they're not for what you're for, but they're against who you're against. So you're coming together. They will team up with you to help you fight the greater enemy. But don't confuse them by their association. They will only be with you until a victory is accomplished. Once a victory is accomplished, they're gone out of your life. Are you with me? What I'm saying to you is this. Expect the constituents and comrades to leave you and desert you after a while. Don't be upset when a constituent or a comrade leaves you. Hold on to your confidants. Hold on to the people who God has brought into your life. Build that. Are you hearing me this morning? You can't just do life with anyone. Protect that. Listen, if you find a few people your entire life, Pedro, come. Jay, you come. I'm my brother. And this, I'm just, this today was just the foundation watch. If you find a few people in your entire life with whom you can share your dreams with and they'll celebrate you, you are blessed. Hello. You know what? When I was in the world, when you're in the world, you think the people that you sit around and party with are your, are your confidants. We're sitting around getting drunk together. Hey, my, hey, my boy, hey! Hey, my boy, hey. Get high with these guys. Yeah, yeah, we're partying together. Woo, woo! They're gone. <laughs> you get locked up. And the moment they get, woo, woo, you're gone. The moment they get locked up, yeah, Jose and Pedro are with me too. I can tell you what they're doing. What a confidant. We'll turn you in. What? You thought, why? Because you were in that level of immaturity. You grow up and you, you learn. Not everybody that you call a confidant or a friend or a friend, but when you find encouragers, 
why am I, Pastor, why are you teaching this? Because we've got so many people who are wrestling and fighting, discouragement. Find an encourager in your life. Tack up with somebody who's for you. There's, I, can, I can pick up the phone. There's certain people, when I'm down, I can call certain people. There's certain levels. See, even my confidants are at, are at certain need. I go, I don't, I, when I need love, I call this confidant. They'll love me. They'll love me. When I, when I call, because if I call this one, they'll tell me the truth. If it's going to hurt, but I know it's the truth, that's because they love me. But they love me. That's my comment. They're the ones that are going to tell me straight up. You, you, you know what I mean? But they're encouragers. Find encouragers in your life. Get away from discouragers. And find encouragers. People who are going to encourage your walk with God. People who are going to encourage your walk with God. Hello? Listen, I need someone that's going to be really happy for me. I don't, want, I don't want just anyone praying for me. Hello? I want someone who's going to be really pray for me and want the best of me. Who wants me to be an overcomer. Hello? See, God is faithful. He'll always give you somebody to do life with that is for you. Stop settling for foolish people who are not really for you. Stop focusing on the things and the people that God took from you. And remember that God is bringing something to you. I want you to know that surround yourself with encouragers. You should thank God for all the things that didn't work out in your life. If they, if they were, because they were just a prerequisite for what God is about to bless you with. God can't. Listen. God can't just cause, God is, is not going to just cause things to happen. Just, let me just do this just because just you want it. I found out in my life, most of, and every single one of my blessings came as a direct effect of having a relationship with someone. Some, I had a relationship with someone, they opened a door to something else, they opened a door to something else, they opened a door to something else. And it was because of that person I do life with. You do life with people at different levels. Learn. Learn to do life wise. Learn to be wise in how you do life. Hello? Because guess what? You only got one life. You know what's funny? Can I, we are so concerned with our money. We're so concerned with our money. But there's something more valuable than your money. Can I tell you one more value of your money? Your time. Your time. How, how many have made, spent, made money and lost money? Well, right? Made money and lost money. And the money you lost, what's the end You can make more money. You can always make more money, but you can never make more time. Why am I telling you this? Because the most valuable thing you can give people other people is time with him. If I go spend time with Brother Daniel, me and Brother Daniel going to a restaurant and we sit down and we spend two hours together. I got to this, you can take, I'll let you take me to lunch deal. You take me to lunch. You buy me my lunch. No, I just want Because money don't mean nothing. It's time. Watch. If he takes, we go to lunch, and I sit down with him. After we walk away, we spend two hours at that restaurant. We spend two hours, spend what, 25 bucks? Man, that's a cheap lunch, man. We spend two hours, we spend $200. Come on, he owes big money like that. He spend $200. Thank you for the job. So, we spend two hours, spend $50 on lunch. We walk away. Let's say I paid for him. I can go make that fifty dollars back, but I can never get that two hours back. Think about it. I can make that fifty dollars back, but I can't get those two hours. Back. The value of my investment in him wasn't that I bought him lunch. The value was that I spent two hours of my life that I would never ever get back. Think about that. 
Now let me ask you this. Who are you doing life with? Who are you investing your most valuable commodity in? That's why we say, well, I gotta spend time with my kids. I gotta spend time with my wife. I gotta spend time with my family. I gotta spend time. Why? Because time is more valuable than anything. So if time is more valuable than anything, be wise with your time. Don't walk in the path of sinners. Don't seek the counsel of the ungodly. Don't sit in the seat of the scornful. Because the more time you spend with them, the more you become like them. But when you surround your life with people who are going after God, guess what? You go after God. When you surround your life with people who are getting closer to their kingdom agenda, you follow that kingdom walk. When you spend around your people around faithful people, you become more faithful. When you spend time around wise people, you become wiser. When you spend around spend time with prudent people, you become more prudent. When you spend time around a responsible people, you become more responsible. You become like them. And they become like you. Are you with me? Well, that's why the Bible says we're Whatever two agree on earth, whatever they agree will be done in heaven. Whatever they bind on earth will be heard. Whatever two. Why? You can't do this thing on your own. You need someone else to do like it. Are y'all receiving that this morning? Y'all receiving this? I, I felt this deep in my spirit. You know why? God, I, I was, it was after that crawfish thing. Uh, I talked about that. And I remember after the crawfish thing, we sat around a few of us and, and we just we laughed and we talked and and then Robert turned around and said, Man, the best thing about this whole crawfish thing was that that moment or that one hour that we sat there just laughing and talking. That was the best thing. And then I, I when he told me that I was like, man, that was awesome. Yeah, it was, it was. You know, I didn't even like you go, oh, how much did we make? And at that point, we just that was about that time. Then I drove home and I got out of my truck and I looked across the street and I had some neighbors. My neighbor, she she struggles with depression because her son her son was in the military and he committed suicide and she struggled ever since. She just she secludes herself. She lives in isolation. She I never seen with friends. They just she comes out and walks about hi I want to go hey how are you when she feels real depressed and she sees us outside she'll come to us and, and my wife will sit there and cry with her and we'll pray for her there in the middle of the street and we'll talk to her and we were invited to the church but they they just that's just they're just isolated like her and her husband they they lived that life and I and I got out of the church and I looked across and, and I just saw them there and I just felt pity in my heart I felt compassion I felt in my heart I just I felt sorry I said wow. And that's when I thought about doing this series. That's when doing life, I thought, man, who, I thought to myself, who do they do life with? That's just such a sad place to be in your, in your life. To be so hurt that you isolate yourself. To be so depressed that you isolate yourself. Can I still tell you? There are godly people that you can call your confidants. You just got to, some of you need to start praying, God, send me a confidant. I'm tired of sharing my life with foolish people. I'm tired of putting my intimate moments out there on the table for someone just to grab them and abuse them and tear me apart for them. I want people who are who believe in me, who are who are my confidant, who can encourage me, Lord, and that I can be an encouragement to them. Why don't you stand up with me?